Okay, good day everyone. Our subject today is Health 6, Quarter 3, Week 4. Objectives that we are going to discuss today are the following. It explains how poor environmental sanitation can negatively impact the health of an individual. Discusses ways to keep water and air clean and safe. Explains the effect of a noisy environment and suggests ways to control or manage noise pollution. So without further ado, so let us start our lesson today. So before we proceed, let us have a review to our previous lesson that we had last week. So here is the direction, right through the statement is correct and false if it is not. Number one, paper and plastic may be segregated from other wastes in order to be recycled. So the answer is true. Next, in number two, you can help build and maintain a healthy school and community environment. The answer is true. In number three, trees help prevent soil erosion. So the answer is also true. In number four, deforestation is a good practice to plant more trees in the community. The answer is false. Next, in number five, Saving energy can eventually help save the planet from destruction. The answer is true. Okay, so you have already understood our previous lesson that we had last week. So let us now proceed to our new lesson today, which is about diseases and disorders caused by poor environmental sanitations. So the first one is the respiratory diseases. One of the common respiratory sicknesses that is an effect of poor environmental sanitation is the common cold. When you experience itching or sore throat, runny nose, sneezing, nasal congestion, watery eyes, and mucus drainage, then you have the symptoms of common cold. The common cold is a viral infection of the upper respiratory tract caused by many viruses. Number two is gastrointestinal diseases. Gastrointestinal diseases refer to diseases involving the gastrointestinal tract, namely the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and rectum, and the accessory organs of the digestions, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These diseases are caused by poor personal hygiene, for environmental sanitation and limited access to clean water. Some of these diseases are Diarrhea is the opposite of constipation and is sometimes called intestinal flu. It is the condition of unusual frequent and liquid bowel movement. Some of the causes of the infection are viruses, bacteria, and other organisms, and contaminated food. Cholera is an infection of the small intestine that may result to severe diarrhea. This can lead to dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and even death if untreated. Transmission occurs primarily by drinking water or eating food that has been contaminated. Cholera can be prevented by means of access to safe drinking water and good hygiene. Dysentery Dysentery is an infectious disease. It is passed through the ingestion of food and water that has been contaminated. The transmission is often infected individuals who handle food in unwashed hands. It is commonly found when people are crowded together and have access only to primitive sanitary facilities. Other intestinal diseases are amoebiasis. Amoebiasis. Amoebiasis is caused by a protozoan, which is a single cell. It is a parasite which invades the large intestine, causing stomach pains, cramping, and bloody diarrhea. 
schistosomiasis is a disease caused by parasitic worms. Some parasites enter the body through skin and make their way to the intestines where they breed and cause infection. Swimming or washing in contaminated water makes human a susceptible host. Next number three is the skin diseases. The skin is the largest organ of the body that contains the nerves that sense pain, cold, and heat. When the skin comes in contact with pollutants, it results to some illnesses like eczema, scabies, and ringworms. What are neurological impairments? Neurological impairments are diseases that are related to the brain and spinal cord. One cause of this problem is mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning is a type of metal poisoning and medical condition caused by exposure to mercury or its compounds. You have heard of factories that use the heavy metal mercury in their industrial production. Some of this mercury escaped in the environment of these factories. Exposure to the heavy metal mercury can seriously affect one's vision, hearing, and speech. Some of the toxic effects of mercury poisoning include damage to the kidney, lungs, and brain. The infected person should stop the exposure to mercury. What is environmental sanitation? Improving the cleanliness and sanitation of the environment will improve the quality of water and air that we take in. Environmental sanitation means keeping your environment free from air, water, and even noise pollution so that the people in the community will improve their health. This will also reduce health problems and diseases. Number one is clean water. Clean and potable is a result of the environment is clean. In the barrio, many of the main source of drinking water are wells and springs. Sometimes, the source of water are lakes and rivers. Nowadays, there are many chemicals and other pollutants that enter the water sources. Thus, water treatment is needed. Water treatment can be done by means of boiling the water or by treating it with chemicals to kill bacteria. In big cities, there are water treatment plants. They clean and distinct water from dirt and store water before they are run through pipes directly to homes, schools, and offices. Clean Air The government should see to it that the industries, factories, cars, trucks, jeeps, and tricycles will make sure that they do not destroy the air we breathe with harmful air pollutants. Air pollution is not for the lung and heart. It causes respiratory problems among many people. So here are the effects of noise pollution. So we have irritation, nervousness, increased stress, sleep disturbance, and increased blood pressure. These are the effects of noise pollution. Every source of noise is a potential source of noise pollution. Air conditioners, electronic home appliances, trains, traffic, heavy equipment, and others all make noise. The dangerous levels of noise in a noisy environment could be hazardous to human health. Noise pollution has been linked to health problems like hearing loss, high blood pressure, fatigue, increased stress, and sleeplessness. How can you control or prevent noise pollution? Number one, so we have here turn off electronic gadgets, turn down volumes when playing various music systems such as stereos, televisions, and the like. Stay away from noisy machines and heavy equipment. It has been observed that certain persons blow horns of their vehicle unnecessarily or remove silencers of the exhaust pipes of vehicles. Such practices which produce more noise should be avoided. Use personal protection in places or in locations where noise cannot be controlled or reduced. 
in certain high noise areas such as airports and some factories and construction sites, workers wear headphones to block out dangerous noise levels. Cover your ears or wear earplugs or headphones when near these noisy places. So th these are the activities that you are going to answer and that you are going to do to your self-learning module. And here is the direction. Check the appropriate box that corresponds to the correct answer. So we're going to put a check if it is a true or false. We're going to read the certain sentences here and then you're going to write the true or false. Uh, check true or false. Then next for activity number two, write the word or phrase in which a man's activity is depicted in the picture. Okay, and here is also the active part of the activity two. Direction, put an upward arrow for desirable human activities and downward for environmental sanitation practices. Next is the activity 3 and then let's do it. So here are the following questions that you're going to answer. Letter A, what are the ways to control noise pollution? Letter B, how does noise pollution can affect your health? And for the letter C, give one example on how to reduce noise pollution. Explain and why. And then for the last activity, which is activity 4, give three ways by which you can help, control, reduce, and prevent noise pollution. Okay, that's all. That does us all. And thank you.